What's up, Calc gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here, right? We got this mass, some pulleys, a whole lot of stuff going on. Let's try to simplify this the most possible way. So we have the mass of the cylinder is 40 kilograms. So C is equal to, or I guess the mass of C is equal to 40 kilograms. So let's start there. And the mass of cylinder A is what we're trying to find. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, let's get started, right? So which point are we going to pick? Our goal now is to draw a force body diagram. That's how you want to start these problems. Where are we going to pick to be our center, right? Well, I can't, I don't know where I'm going to put it on the screen right now, but there's going to be tension forces in each direction, right? There's going to be, of course, the force, the force, the force pulling down from A, the force pulling left from D, and then there's the tension force from the pulley on C. So what we have here is a, a pulley that's hanging C. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to make our force body diagram at point E because that's where all of the forces are going away, right? We know there's a force pulling down there, left, and up to the right. So let's draw those. So this is force tension, right? The tension force of the mass from A. This is another tension force, force of tension uh, ED, I guess we can label it. And then this is another tension force. Uh, but we're going to label that force tension C because it's from the mass C. And we know that this angle is 30 degrees. And we know the mass of C. So when we have a problem like this, we know it's in equilibrium, right? Uh, these problems are going to be equilibrium because we're in statics, of course. And equilibrium basically states two things. It states that some of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. What this is saying is that any force pulling this way is pulling equally back this way by another force, making it so nothing is moving. Same thing with the y direction, some of the forces in the y direction is also equal to zero. Anything that's pulling up on it is pulling, has another force pulling down on it at an equal rate, making it so it's not accelerating, not speeding up or slowing down. So now what we need to do is calculate what these some of the forces are in the x direction. So some of the forces in the x direction, let's find out. So we have this force, force, um, what is that? I don't even know what I labeled that, D to E, force tension E to D. So it's gonna be negative, and do we know that? We don't know that, do we? Do we even have to know that? I mean, maybe. Hey, okay, what did I even solve? Oh, I solved for the wrong thing. Okay, we're gonna be figuring this one out together, guys. Yeah, we're gonna be figuring this one out together. So let's just start with the forces in the x direction. So this is gonna be negative, because it's pulling in the negative x direction, force EV. But then it has this force pulling on it in the right, the right direction, positive x. So positive sign, force tension from C. But it doesn't pull that entire force. Only some of it is pulling in the x direction. We're only finding some of the forces in the x direction because this force is at an angle, we need to find actually what that angle is only in the x direction, which is going to be this, right? This is another vector, force C in the x direction, which is what we're trying to find here. So if we make this triangle, we know that cosine of theta, cosine of theta, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. We know that hypotenuse is just this, the total force vector, force of C, and we know theta is 30 degrees, so we can say cosine of 30 is equal to force in the x direction over the total force of C. We're trying to find force of C in the x direction, so if we multiply this over, we can just say that force C cosine of 30 is equal to force of C in the x direction. So that's what we're trying to find, right? So we're going to plug that right in. Fc cosine of 30. And that's all of our forces in the x side. So how can we write this out some more? Well, we might not need it, because I just realized I'm solving for something different than what I wrote down. So let's try the x direction first, or next. So x, same thing, we know we have this, force tension from A pulling straight down, so it's going to be negative, because it's negative in the y, so force of A, but then it's going to be plus, because this one's pulling upward. It's facing up to the positive y. So once again, we're going to need to do this, but with sine this time. We know sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So we are looking for force in the y. So we know sine theta is 30, and we know hypotenuse, so let's multiply the hypotenuse over. So force of c, sine of 30, 
is equal to the force of c in the y direction, which is what we're looking for. And we can just add that right in. Force of c sine of 30. And we know that this one, I didn't mention it in, in the x, but this is pulling straight down, which means it isn't affecting the x and y. Same thing for this. This is pulling just directly in the x direction, so it doesn't pull it up or down. So we can just say that we can ignore that for now. So what are we trying to find? If the mass, determine the mass of cylinder A in order to hold the assembly position here. Okay, well, so we're looking for this right here. We're looking for force A. This is what we want to find. So we can add that over. Force A is equal to force C sine of 30. Well, we want to find what the force C is, right? How are we going to do that? Well, force C, we can say, is due to the mass, right? We have this mass pulling down on it. And because it goes over a frictionless pulley, it, it's not going to change the force on it. The force and the strain, but like just above where the mass C is, is going to be the same force tension pulling on it in the other direction. So we know that force due to gravity, I'm going to sit down actually. Force due to gravity is mass times acceleration. Acceleration is gravity, so 9.81. So the mass, we well, are given mass, right? The mass of C is 40 kilograms. So we can say that force of C is equal to 40 kilograms times 9.81. I don't know what that number is exactly, but we're going to find it out. So let's go back to this equation. Force on A, which is the force. We can say that again once again, force of A. Force of A is also just another gravity force, right? It's just another weight pulling down on that string. So that force is going to be equal to mass times gravity. So force of A is equal to mass of A times gravity, which is equal to uh, the mass of C sine 30. So this is 40 times 9.81 times sine of 30. So if we're looking for just mass of A, which is what we're trying to find, mass of A is equal to 40 times 9.81 sine of 30 divided by gravity, which gravity is 9.81. So once again, these cancel out. And your final uh, result is just going to be 40 sine of 30, which I need to calculate. I hope I didn't lose my calculator. Yeah, it's still in here. Good. All right. 40 sine of 30 is 20. Wow. I should have known that. So mass of A is equal to 20 kilograms, kilograms, not kilometers. Kilometers. There you go. So that's mass of A. Uh, so what ended up happening is we did not need forces in the x direction. Uh, I thought that'd be funny just to throw that in. Uh, I definitely didn't do that on accident. But yeah, that's how you do it if you want to find forces in the x direction. Feel free to watch my future videos where you will need that. So yeah, that's a good practice for this. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you at all, feel free to check out my other videos, check out my playlist. It's going to be listed somewhere up there earlier in the video. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.